Is Josh Freeze a good replacement drummer for Foo Fighters based off what we saw last night at Sonic Temple? Yes. But I think there might be better. I think he was great. As he moves forward, it'll be interesting to see how he gets more comfortable and kind of finds his own role in the band. All right. We're recording. We're recording? I'm, yeah. I, don't, I don't want us to crash. Um, That'd be a great video, though. Th it would be a good video. I'm kind of wondering, uh, can you get in trouble with the cops for holding a microphone while you're while you're driving? I don't know. No one snitch <laughs> us out in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> this is our next day recap. We just saw Foo Fighters at Sonic Temple Festival in Columbus, Ohio, and we are now driving back to New York. We are making this podcast episode on the ride home. It's a, it's a long drive. We do a, we do a lot for the content. We're, we're literally doing this while we're driving. We um, crash. <laughs> it's, it's for y'all. <laughs> Today's uh, review is our, a little bit of our like our afterthoughts of after seeing the Foo Fighters back for one of their first shows with their new drummer, Josh Freeze. Freeze? 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 I think jo Freeze. Josh Freeze. Yeah, yeah. That's, that seems right. Let's start with general thoughts, Chris. What, what did you think of Josh's playing last night? It's obviously amazing. He's a great drummer. He's a very, very good drummer. Uh, I did notice some things that, like, I like that Taylor does more. I mean, what, yeah, what, yeah. what show is this? This is, like, his third with him? Yeah, third I, think, or fourth? I think they did New Hampshire, and then they did Boston Calling. Yeah. And then they did Sonic Temple last night. So I feel like this is, like, a super premature evaluation of it, because I don't want to be judged on my first few shows with a band, you know? But I, I thought he was really good. Yeah, no, I think I think he played, played well. Um, I did notice that he, like, changed a bunch of the parts. Yeah. Like, slightly. And I, th I think it was, like, obviously pretty intentional. But, like, I know it's, like, right off the bat, they opened their set with All My Life. I don't know. You know that, like, one, the drum fill that's, like, yeah. like, right yeah. before the chorus, they has that little, boom. On and on, I got nothing to hide. He did like a lot of like different things. He would be like da 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 or like Yeah. I don't know. He did he did like different parts. I do feel like I was very like more intentionally listening to the drums yesterday for a Foo Fighters. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people than, were. Yeah, like, than maybe I usually would. Uh, I did notice one thing, which I guess I never really noticed before, but so you know that famous video that's kind of been going around online of Dave Grohl talking with uh, Pharrell in the studio where he tells him about like oh how he stole the disco beat and stuff like that yeah. the Nirvana record I pulled so much stuff from the Gap Band and Cameo and Tony Thompson all that yeah, yeah. Where he, still, he uses all the flams that like crap boom, crap boom, yeah and that kind of thing I noticed that the Foo Fighters do that a lot too yeah. And I didn't really notice it until last night when I was, like, really intently just paying attention to what was happening on the drums. Yeah. Famously, like, it's not really a flam, but famously, it kind, of, kind of something like that is, like, the Pretender in the beginning. Yeah. But there's there was a couple other tunes. I think I took some video, actually, of a specific spot. <laughs> where that happened, but, like, a lot of flam kick stuff going on. I mean, Taylor did that a lot, too. That, that's a very Foo Fighters rock drumming thing. Yeah. And that's definitely from Dave. Yeah. Because Dave, every project he plays in, he flams a lot. He does that tratu, tratu, you know? One other thing I noticed, and we talked about this a little bit like while we were there, but Josh plays with two kick drums. So he plays like a double kick yeah. set. I don't remember ever seeing Taylor with two kick drums. I, someone could correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. It was new looking to me in the moment. Like I saw the two yeah. kick drums. I was like, I don't think Taylor ever really did no, the double I, kick thing. I think he never used a double kick like two kick drums maybe live he would use two kick pedals but i don't think so and when i, I looked up a few videos and he's always using one kick pedal okay so that's interesting because then it's like i guess josh added that in definitely into like some of the, the soloing parts he yeah. did but then like i also think about like other bands josh has played in and he's played in a bunch and i can't imagine that he had double kick when he played with the offspring or double kick yeah. drums when he played with devo yeah. And I could be wrong with that, but he might have, like, very intentionally done that to play with the Foo Fighters. And I almost wonder if that was, like, his way of almost trying to differ himself a little bit. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, realistically, when you're playing arena rock like that, I would want double kick. Just, even if it's not used in any of our songs. It just looks cool. It looks cool. And also just for those, like, big rock endings and, you know, those big solos that they do, like, 20 times in the set. Yeah. Like, having that double kick just makes it bigger, you know? And then, speaking of the drum solos, I, I guess the last thing to touch on about Josh is playing in general he did take a lot of drum solos or like at, yeah. least, at least a good handful of them monkey wrench he took like a pretty big one yeah but there's a bunch of tunes 
where he like took some pretty big fills and and, and, and different parts where it was kind of just him and he was obviously like the focus and yeah. it, it kind of surprised me a little bit yeah agreed i thought like definitely he would just kind of like not take the back seat but i thought he wouldn't like necessarily take the f- spotlight you know do the parts maybe do a solo here or there do like big fills where they're needed but i didn't think he'd be taking the spotlight like like, like that right yeah. off the bat yeah yeah i mean i guess it's kind of cool because it's like i guess it shows that like they are just trying to move forward and like progress as a band it's obviously very tragic and sad what happened but they're like okay but we get we're gonna keep doing this thing yeah and we're gonna do it the foo fighters way yeah because taylor took solos too so i guess it's like it, yeah it's cool what yeah. do you think about Josh Freeze's drum uh, drum solos compared to like a Taylor drum uh, solo? They're really like different styles, honestly. Obviously, it's all Foo Fighters, but Taylor Hawkins' way of playing was just a lot more unique, in my opinion. Honestly, couldn't tell you Josh Freeze's solos. Like, there wasn't any part of it that I was like, "Wow, that's like a cool little thing." It, it was amazing, and obviously, like he's very talented, but like nothing stuck out to me. Yeah, I mean, they. I think they got the right guy in one sense that he's like a. He's definitely a basher. Yeah. Like the oh, dude, definitely. The dude hits hard. They're kind of bad needs that because Dave Grohl hits hard. Exactly. Taylor was a hard hitting drummer. Like, I obviously I think there's always going to be like favoritism towards Taylor. Of course. Because he's Taylor, but like, yeah. let's answer the question that this video will be titled, which is, <laughs> is Josh Freeze a good replacement drummer for Foo Fighters based off what we saw last night at Sonic Temple? Yes, but I think. There might be better. I think so too. I think he was great. I think it. I think it. As he moves forward, it'll be interesting to see how he gets more comfortable and kind of finds his own role in the band. Yeah. Um, An- another thing. Uh, no backup vocals. That's yeah. He yeah. Didn't Josh sing. never sang. That's true. He didn't sing. He's he's no Taylor, but like. Yeah. He did his thing. Yeah. He did his thing, and I mean, good on him for getting that fucking gig. Yeah. <laughs> hey, one thing I'm gonna miss. One of my favorite things for a Foo Fighter show is the fact that Dave would get on the set and like swap places with Taylor. And I don't know if he's ever going to be able to do that or if he's going to get someone else to come out and sing and he hops on the set or yeah, that's true. it's a whole different thing. Yeah. Yeah. They, they lost a singer. Yeah. In it, yeah. Which is tough. Yeah. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see where they go f- moving forward. It seems like he is the guy for the Foo Fighters because they've kind of announced him as, a, as the drummer. Yeah. No, so, he's in. I thought it was good, though. Overall, it was a great set last night. Really cool. Played all the songs. I wasn't, I wasn't upset about anything. <laughs> they missed a few of my hits. No big me. All right, well, before I crash the van, maybe we'll wrap this one up. Crash the van. Do it. You won't do it. What do we got? We got like three hours left, three and a half hours left to get back to New York? Oh, honey. Four hours. Four hours. <laughs> All right, well, shout out Sonic Temple. Yeah. Yeah.